Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be taking out the distilled water which we ran in the system for the first couple of days while we tested everything out to make sure everything was okay. We haven't come across any problems at all. Everything's been absolutely perfect. So we're going to take the distilled water out and replace it with some EK Cryofuel Navy Blue UV Reactive coolant so let's get stuck into it okay so as I showed you in the previous video I do have a drain port set up on this case so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this end plug make sure our valve is closed and uh, which it is at the moment so straight up and down is closed in line with the flow is open so we're gonna plug in our drain port drain it into this bucket now the bucket actually has it's a crappy old bucket and I apologize for that but it will hold water the bucket's actually got markings there so we can see how much water comes out. We're going to compare that with how much water went in to see how much water's left behind in the system and determine whether we need to try and extract more water out. Now to run the pump, I've done things a little bit differently this time because the power supply is already installed. Now excuse the dodgy cabling here, I haven't quite finished with the rear cable management yet, but we're running into an external power supply. So we're just using a Molex connector here into a 14 volt power supply. Now the pump is good for 8 volts up to I think it was 24 volts so this will work fine and I have tested it prior just to make sure. So we're going to drain it out, see how much coolant we get out and then we'll refill it and we'll go from there. Alright so making sure that the drain port is closed which it is, undo our cap and install our drain pipe. All right, so make sure that's on nice and tight, make sure it's in the bucket, and open up the valve. Now, we're not going to see any flow just yet because we need to open up the top port as well. So I'll open that up, and there we go. Okay, so the water's out. Now, we'll just jump around the front quickly and I'll show you how much actually came out. So that actually did better than I thought it would. So. So you can see the reservoir is completely empty. The water is all sucked out of the top half of the case. And all we're left with is this little bit of water in the upline from the GPU back to the radiator. Now that was kind of expected because the radiator is draining into this line which then goes up to the GPU so it doesn't really have a way to flow back to the um, system. But that basically means the only liquid that we've still got in the system is just this part from here back. So what I'll do is I'll try to blow a little bit of air in see if I can release that through the system back into the reservoir. But even if we were to leave it like that, that's a very, very small percentage of water left behind. Okay, so what I've got here is my filling syringe and I've put a little bit of blue tack around the end here to create a bit of a seal on the top of the um, reservoir. So what I'm doing is I'm just plugging it in, getting it so it's nice and airtight and then just pumping air in. And that's just pushing the water through the system. And I am actually getting a little bit more out. And then what I'll do, tilt the case up and then go again and that is actually getting a little bit more water out so there is a little bit of water still up in this radiator so push that out go again best we're going to be able to do for now. So we've got a little bit of water in this pipe and then a little bit in here as well but it's nothing to worry about. It's only just the base of this radiator so it's probably you know five percent of the water that was in the system. So what we'll do is we'll measure how much went in versus how much came out and then we can establish whether we need to take further measures to try and drain it more. But because it's only distilled water, it really doesn't matter too much. Okay, so I've had a look and 1.1 litres went in and just a little bit over one litre came out again. So we've got less than 10% of the water left behind in the system, which I think is fine because it's just distilled water. Obviously, if we were running a different colour coolant, or some you know, other chemical, chemical constituent that was inside the system, we'd want to flush it out completely and probably remove the pipes, 
make sure it was completely flushed out. But for the sake of this exercise, we don't need to worry about that because it's just distilled water. The new coolant will, will mix in and dilute in the remaining water inside the system and everything will be absolutely fine. If we're really pedantic and we want to have it as dark as possible, we can do a flush with this stuff. So we could use one bottle to actually flush it out empty it again and then use another bottle to fill it. But this stuff is quite expensive and honestly with the small amount of water that's left behind in the system, I really don't think it's worth it in this instance. So let's go ahead with filling the system back up with the coolant. All right, so close off our valve again and undo our drain port and replace the cap. All right, we are ready to start filling up again. Okay, now even though the system's been running for almost a week now without a single issue or leak or anything I'm still going to be super pedantic and just put down some paper towels again I'll just sit that there, sit that underneath there as well <clears throat> might just put one piece underneath the fittings there as well just to make absolutely sure and we'll put one underneath at the back as well okay so we know we got about a litre out and this is a 900ml bottle so we're going to tip, tip the entire contents of this into our container we may end up needing a little bit more as well. That's okay, because I do have a second container. Okay, so that's what it looks like inside the bowl. So hopefully it's gonna look pretty cool inside the system. So let's start filling. You remember from last time we had to pump a bit of air through just to get things started so we'll do the same thing again so we'll get our drain pipe again just screw it onto the top doesn't need to be super tight or anything all we're doing is just pumping a little bit of air just to get things started There we go. All right, switch it off again because the water level's reached the bottom and we continue to fill. So we're starting to get circulation now, which is good. So it's just a matter of working out those air bubbles. So we'll continue to fill. Just quickly make sure we don't have any leaks. Put it on once more. And we now have full circulation, so we can continue to add more coolant to the system while it's running and we'll just check that we don't get any leaks come up everything looks good that looks really cool that fluid very happy with that Okay, so we filled up the system to a reference point just at the side of that clamp there so that we can see if the fluid level drops significantly over the next couple of hours while we bleed the system. Now I've got the fill port open as you can see. 
so that the air can escape. Obviously, we don't want to try and bleed a system with the um, with the plug in there because the air has nowhere to escape. It makes it take a lot longer to bleed out. So um, we're going to leave that open now. It's absolutely necessary to make sure that we remember to put the plug back in before we move the system, especially when the reservoir is full because obviously it will spill everywhere and that would be a disaster. So I'm going to leave a big note on it saying do not pick me up until you've put this connector back in. But we're just going to let it sit here now for the next couple of hours, bleed out completely. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll be all good. All right, so we've had it sitting for a couple of hours now. Everything looks like it's totally fine. There's no leaks at all to speak of. The bubbles has pretty much all come out of the system. There's no bubbles left in the um, in either of the heat sinks that I can see, so everything looks good. So we're gonna put the sides back on, plug it all back in, and we'll run it up, let it sit in the BIOS, make sure that the CPU and GPU temperatures are okay. Then we can boot back into Windows, and I think the next step after that is gonna be to start to get into some overclocking. So make sure you do stick around for that. I'll be covering all of that in details, the settings that I end up using, what all the various different settings do and all that kind of stuff. So it's been a long time since I've done that kind of thing. I know things have changed a lot since then, but I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it. So I hope you're finding these videos interesting. If you are, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well so you don't miss the next video and of course the notification button too. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.